My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. This is episode number 113 of the 120 Days to Jam Chemistry with Flash IZ. In this episode, we shall be looking at empirical formula and molecular formula. These are formulas we can use to represent compounds, organic compounds, most of the time. Now, glucose is C6 O6. This is the molecular formula of glucose. Why? It shows us how many of carbons, how many of hydrogen, and how many of oxygen are present in glucose. Glucose has 6 carbon, 12 hydrogen, and 6 oxygen. This is the molecular formula of glucose. Molecular. It tells us how many of the elements each that combine to form the compound. Empirical formula, on the other hand, does not give us the exact molecules present in the compound. What it does is to give you the simplest whole number ratio of the elements that make up the compound or of the atoms that make up the compound. Look at this. If this is glucose, you will agree with me that if we divide everything by 6, you will have C1, H2O1. This is the same thing as C. H2O. You see, this is the simplest formula of the of glucose, which shows the ratio of compound elements present. Because in glucose, you have 6 carbon, 12 hydrogen, 6 oxygen. This is in the ratio 1, ratio 2, ratio 1. Empirical formula basically shows the ratio in the simplest whole number. This is empirical formula. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a past question says glucose expressed as CH2O is which formula? It is definitely empirical formula. It shows the simplest whole number, not actually the formula or the molecular formula of the compound. Now, how do we calculate empirical formula and how do we calculate molecular formula? If you are able to eventually calculate empirical formula, to get the molecular formula, you multiply the empirical formula by n. What is n? n is when you divide the mass you are given by the mass you got from the empirical formula. All these are grammar. Let's see swing to action. A compound is composed of 1.33 grams of potassium. 1.77 grams of chromium and 1.9 grams of oxygen. Calculate the empirical formula. This compound is obviously or basically composed of potassium, composed of chromium, and it is composed of oxygen. The first step in calculating empirical formula is to write out the elements and their masses. In this case, you are given the masses of each of the elements present in the compound. In other cases, you will not be given masses, but you will be given the percentage. Any one you are given, whether mass or percentage, it is the same procedure. It is the same step. For potassium, 1.33 grams. Chromium, 1.77 grams oxygen 1.90 grams after writing out the masses or the percentage the second thing you do in empirical formula is you divide them by the molar mass so 
When you divide mass or percentage by molar mass, what do you have? That is number of moles. The molar mass will always be given to you for potassium 39. So if I divide by molar mass, I will get 1.33 over 39. Chromium, molar mass is 52. If you divide the mass by molar mass, you get the number of moles, which will be 8. Oxygen, 16. So 1.90 over 16. This is the number of moles here. This is the number of moles here. And this is the number of moles here. The last step in empirical formula, you divide by the smallest number of moles. The smallest number here is 0.034. When you divide here by 0.034, divide here by 0.034, divide here by 0.034, you get 1 here, you get 1 here, here you get 3.5. Ladies and gentlemen, this answer is not correct. Why? For empirical formula, the ratio has to be whole number, no decimal point. How do we then convert this to whole number? Should we multiply 3 point, uh, should we approximate 3.5 to 4 or approximate to 3? No, you are not permitted to approximate. Anytime your empirical formula is in decimal, if it's let's say 3.01, you can approximate to 3. 3.02, you can approximate to 3. But once it is large, like 3.5, don't approximate. What we should do is multiply by a number that will give all of them whole number. If we try 2, if you multiply here by 2, you will get 2. If you multiply here by 2, you will get 2. If you multiply 3.5 by 2, you will get 7. So this actually gives us whole number. So your empirical formula will simply be potassium is 2, chromium is 2, oxygen is 7. This is the empirical formula. Potassium hepta-oxidiphomate 14, 6. Potassium hepta-oxidiphomate 6 is the uh, empirical formula. Look at the next question. A hydrocarbon contains 92.3% carbon by mass. What is the empirical formula? Look at this. A hydrocarbon contains 92.3% Carbon. Hydrocarbon are compound that contain only carbon and hydrogen. If we have carbon, the next element in hydrocarbon is hydrogen. And if you are told that an oxide contains 60% of manganese, oxide is simply an element and oxygen only. So if you are given one of the elements like manganese 60%, the other one will definitely be oxygen because oxide is element and oxygen and hydrocarbon will be carbon and hydrogen if you're given only hydrogen the other one will be carbon and if you're given just carbon the other one will be hydrogen so if carbon is 92.3 percent and total percentage we can have is 100 percent so <laughs> hydrogen will simply be 100 minus 92.3 percent that will simply be 7.7 .7 if you are told that a compound contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and you are given the percentage of hydrogen, the percentage of carbon and hydrogen, and you are not given the percentage of oxygen, once you add the percentage of the two you are given and subtract from the third one, you get the percentage of the third one. All these questions are basically very simple. It is just for you to use your common sense. Now, I told you, the first thing to do is to divide each of them by their molar mass. You divide here by 12 molar mass of carbon. You divide here by 1 molar mass of hydrogen. This will give you around 7.7. .7. Here you get around 7.7. .7. After dividing by the molar mass, you divide by the smallest number. So, if you divide, <laughs> they are both the same. So, the smallest number is 7.7. .7. Here is 7.7. 7. Here will be 1. Here will be 1. So, the empirical formula will be C1 is 1. In organic chemistry, there is nothing like C1H1. But we have compounds where 
we have the same number of carbon and hydrogen. Example of that is C2H2. Yes, we have this molecular formula. In C2H2, you have two carbon, two hydrogen. So this could be the molecular formula of this compound. But we are asked for empirical formula here to see it. Now let's see how questions come under molecular. What is the molecular formula of an organic compound containing 40% carbon, 6.6% hydrogen, and the rest is oxygen? If the molecular mass is 180 grams per mole. Molecular formula is empirical formula times N, where N is molecular mass over empirical formula mass. Molecular mass is the mass you are given in the question, in this type of question. Now, empirical formula mass is when you calculate empirical formula, or when you are given empirical formula, you calculate the mass of each of the elements and add them. That particular mass is the empirical mass. Once you divide the molecular mass by empirical mass, you get your N, which means N is molecular formula divided by empirical formula. That will give you N. Let's take it one step at a time. We are given an organic compound containing carbon, containing hydrogen, and we are told that the rest is oxygen. In this compound, there are 40% carbon, 40%, hydrogen is 6.6%, 6.6%, and the rest is oxygen. So, everything is 100%. Now, we already have carbon to be 40%, and hydrogen to be 6.6%. If you subtract these two guys from 100%, you should get 53.4%. So the percentage of oxygen is 53.4%. If you are given the mass of carbon, the mass of hydrogen, and you are given the total mass, to get the mass of oxygen, you will simply say the two mass together minus the total mass. So whether you are given mass or you are given percentage, you follow the same procedure. The next step in calculating empirical formula is dividing by the molar mass, that is getting the number of moles. You divide carbon by the molar mass, or hydrogen by the molar mass, 1, oxygen by the molar mass, 16. There you should get 3.3, there you should get 6.6, here you should get 3.3. Um, after that, you divide by the smallest number. The smallest number is 3.3. .3. So, 3.3 and 3.3. .3. This will give you 1, this will give you 2, and this will give you 1. They are all in whole numbers, so nothing much to do here. You simply bring out the compound carbon, 1, hydrogen, 2, oxygen, one. This is the empirical formula. We are not asked to look for this formula, but we need this empirical formula to get the empirical formula mass. Because we already have the molecular mass. The empirical formula mass is the mass of this empirical formula. That will be one carbon to all plus two hydrogen, two times one, two, plus one oxygen. That is 16. This should be 14 plus 16. That should give you a 40, I guess. Yes, 40. Is it 40? 30. 30. So, the empirical formula mass is 30. And N will be 180. 180 divided by 30. 180 divided by 30 is equal 6. So your A is equal 6. Therefore, your molecular formula will be empirical formula times A. And empirical formula is C1H2O1. And our A 
is six. One eighty divided by thirty. So you put this here. Therefore, six times one, six is six times two, four, eight, four, six times one, six, two, six. So the molecular formula of this compound is six, six, eight, four, four, six. That is it for empirical formula and molecular formula application. I trust you found this class interesting. Feel free to subscribe to this channel. Tell your friends about this channel and don't fail to get the flash tenant exam application. It is going to help you greatly. See you in the next episode.